Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? Woman, won't you find your voice? Oh, oh woman, won't you find your soul? When did I know that I was a feminist? That's a bit of a tricky question because, and, and I get it very often from younger women, um, and the simple answer to that, it's, it's not a eureka moment. You know, it's not, it's not one of those things where you say on this particular day, at this particular moment, while I was reading this particular book. Um, it's, it's been a journey. I am still on a journey. I'm still on a quest to discover not only myself, but to discover also other women, to discover other struggles, um, to define things in every space that I am in. So it, it's, I can't think of a specific uh, moment. It's, it's, it's various things where I have grown, where I have learned, where I have been exposed to literature, film, uh, you know, ways of organizing, ways of working with other women, um, understanding certain issues that I didn't understand before. So it's, it's really been a journey, I would say, starting from perhaps the time I started working formally in a women's organization that was back in 1989. So if you want a date, there is a date. Um, in 1989, when I started working with the Women's Action Group, which is a women's organization here. And so I would say from that moment on, a whole series of those things that I've been talking about then started happening. Um, and and you, you still continue to define and redefine your feminism, I think. What does African feminism mean to me? African feminism means um, a movement. It means individuals. Um, it means the collectives, the groups of women um, who have come together to redefine what it is to be a woman, what it is to have rights. Um, African feminism for me, it's about all of those struggles that women have every single day in every part of the continent and or in the diaspora about our rights, about reclaiming our space, about um, insisting that we be treated as equal citizens, as equal human beings, um, but more importantly, it's about all of those issues that each and every one of us cares about. So whether you're rural, whether you're urban, whether you're young, whether you're old, African feminism is that movement, and by movement I don't mean an NGO, I don't mean an organization, I mean all of those struggles wherever they take place. Um, at an individual level, at a collective level. That's what African feminism has meant for me. How have feminists contributed to transforming the African continent? Um, as I said, having started working formally in the women's movement um, back in 89, and even when I look at where we are now in 2016, in 30 short years, um, the phenomenal uh, gains that we have made as women, both formally in terms of you know laws, policies that we have helped to craft, that we have crafted and given to our governments, to our intergovernmental institutions on the continent, to the informal stuff that has happened in terms of changing people's mindsets, changing attitudes, changing values, changing norms, I think for me those are some of the things that very often we don't um, count, we tend to lose sight of. So when people say, you know, what, what have you really contributed, what have you really changed? They will be looking for the more formal things, the things that you can read about, um, or the things that are on a piece of paper. But for me, the biggest gains really have been the ways in which as African feminists, we have I would say to a large extent, really put the issues of women's rights on the agenda. 
uh, on not only of policy agendas but on the agendas of ordinary women and men on the streets and started the dialogue, started the conversations, getting women to be aware of who they are, what is their place in the world, what are the rights that they have, uh, helping women to discover themselves, helping women to form movements. I think for me those are some of the huge gains that we've had. I won't talk about the legislative changes, the policy changes that we've seen from you know, laws on violence against women, domestic violence, sexual violence, um, you know, the recognition of uh, women in politics, women in decision making, um, you know, those kinds of things. I think those are easy to count. I think the more uh, important for me is looking at those ways in which we have shifted conversations, we have shifted mindsets, and continue to do so um, every single day in every single country. What do I see for the future? I want to go back to where I ended talking about what have been the gains. Because for every single gain that we've made, there has been a pushback. So sometimes this is why it's so difficult to count the gains, um, to look at the changes that have happened and really celebrate them because for each and every one of them, there has been pushback. Um, so it's a continuous struggle every day. That's why we have feminist movements. That's why we have feminist groups. That's why we have women's organizations. Um, that's why we have international NGOs, where some of us work, who are also beginning to take up that agenda in support of women's movements. Um, so the way forward for me is continuing not only to fight for new rights, to claim, to define new rights uh, where these don't exist, um, to defending the gains that, that we have made. And, and for me, as someone who's been in the movement for, for, for quite some time now, I will say part of the challenge that I see is more and more and more about defending the space, defending the gains, because we are under a lot of relentless pressure, not only to apologize for where we've gotten to as women, you know, you've seen the rising discourse in the inclusion of men, which is taking away focus from women and girls. You have seen the rise of uh, cultural conservatism. We've seen the rise of religious fundamentalism, and in this continent particularly, I want to name Christian fundamentalism as one of those key things that we are having to confront each and every day, which is depleting our movement of necessary resources, but also of necessary leadership, feminist leadership. And that's something that concerns me quite a great deal because it is rolling back those gains that we thought we had won and questioning those and blaming the advancement of women for some of the social ills um, that we see in many of our countries. So for me, uh, it's about defending the space, it's about defending the gains, and then, um, you know, fighting for new rights, particularly for younger women, um, you know, sexual rights uh, for women. Um, I think that's a critical issue. We have not even begun to make a dent in terms of that conversation. You know, what are our sexual rights um, in all of our diverse sexual orientations on this continent? I think that's an issue that, as, as the feminist movement, we need to push and push really hard. Um, pushing for choice that women should have, particularly young women as well. So those for me are some of the issues that we need to really put front and centre of our struggles as we move forward. African feminist ancestors of feminists. I, I come from that school of thought that yes, there are individual women who've done well, who've been great leaders, who've changed our minds. These can be writers, these are, you know, artists, um, you know, media people. I, 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 and that, I think, is important. You know, leaders of our movements, of our various groups at certain levels. I think all of those are important. But where I come from and what I want to celebrate are the women who have organized in collectives. Because for me, this struggle is much bigger than any of us as individuals. And I think very often we tend to forget um, that, yes, those individual women did make a difference. Um, so I'm not going to give a shout out to any particular individuals. Instead, I will give a big shout out to those of us who have worked in women's groups, large and small, women's movements in whatever shape and form they are, feminist groups in whatever form and shape they are. Because for me, um, it's the collective. It's the power that we have together that is going to make us shift um, the big power struggles that we have in many, many of our lives. So for me, I celebrate the collective, I celebrate the movements, and so a big shout out to all feminist movements. And a woman find your soul 
And don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul Baby, don't let them tell you that this isn't yours Cause you are yours, your voice, your power, your soul Your voice, your power, your soul Your soul, your voice, your power, your soul Oh, oh, woman, won't you find your voice? Say, woman, won't you find your soul? Cause this is yours, oh, baby, you are yours Your voice, your power, your soul Your voice, your power, your soul